Hello Curious Minds, I'm Miles Maxer and welcome back to the Ant Network. Today we are going to be going over the fundamentals of keeping ants in test tube setups. We've been using test tubes in the ant keeping hobby for decades now and it's really important to understand how to properly set them up and then also understand the shortcomings that come along with using test tubes for your ants. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial to show you how to make a test tube setup properly, how to move your ants into those test tubes, and then also how to clean and reuse test tubes setups. For this project, you'll need the following. A test tube, cotton balls or cotton batting, deionized, distilled or bottled water, a skewer or similar utensil, and optionally, aluminum foil, red plastic wrap, or paper. The first step is to select an appropriate test tube. Test tubes are ubiquitous tools used in laboratories and pharmacies for scientific applications. Because of this, there are many different kinds of test tubes available for purchase. We recommend using test tubes with a diameter between 16 and 20 millimeters, and at least 100 millimeters in length. Our lab uses Fisher Brands disposable culture tubes, which are 18 millimeters by 150 millimeters long. Additionally, we prefer glass to plastic, because glass generally offers better clarity and scratch resistance, and is easier to clean. For young ant enthusiasts, ask an adult to help you with the next steps. Make sure your test tube is clean. To avoid contaminating the nest chamber with bacteria and fungi, wash your hands thoroughly or wear gloves before beginning this process. If you are not using gloves, be sure to hold it by the top or bottom to avoid getting fingerprints on the viewing area. While holding the test tube vertically, add water until it reaches approximately one-third of the test tube's volume. Next, select a cotton ball and fold it over itself to create a tight fit. If the cotton is too loose, water will flood the chamber. If it is too tight, you risk cracking the tube or compromising the permeability of the cotton. Add or remove cotton if necessary. The cotton ball should be firm, but mobile. Next, take your rod and push the cotton ball smoothly into the water. Do this quickly to avoid creating air bubbles. The water line should reach just under the face of the cotton. Create an even surface using your rod, and be careful not to push the cotton ball too far, or it will become saturated. Now, fold another cotton ball to create a stopper. Do not use a rubber, plastic, or cork stopper, because this will suffocate your ants over time. Use only cotton balls or compressed cotton stoppers to ensure that air can permeate into the ants' environment. You've now created a standard test tube setup. Optionally, you can make a cover out of aluminum foil, paper, or transparent red plastic. This will give your ants a darker environment to start their colony in. Now that you've prepared a test tube, you are ready to move the ants in. If you are starting with a single queen, gently coax her into the tube. You may use a paintbrush to help guide her or use your fingers if you have a steady hand. Remember, ants can be unpredictable, so you should only do this in a controlled environment like in a tray. A queen may be calm when she enters the tube, or she may panic and immediately try to run out of the exit. Make sure to have the stopper handy so you can quickly seal the tube. It may help to chill the queen in your fridge for about five minutes to slow her movement prior to transferring her to the new tube. Never place ants in the freezer. After a few months, the water reservoir may dry up, or the cotton may have become moldy or affected by bacterial growth. This is not a healthy environment, and you'll need to move your queen or colony to a new tube or formicarium. Please see our advanced test tube tutorial for more information on this process. When cleaning used test tubes, I generally start by removing the cotton using a frayed bamboo skewer or by using large tongs. If the cotton is dry, it may not be easy to pull out. Let it soak and try again. Once the cotton is out, soak the tubes in hot, soapy water. I usually let them rest for a few minutes depending on how dirty the glass is. Then, scrub the tube with a brush and rinse. Let the tube dry vertically. For improved sanitization, glass test tubes may be put in boiling water or autoclaved. Test tubes can be great tools for ant keepers, if used correctly. They are only really meant to be used as temporary housing, and in our observations, ant colonies raised in founding formicaria tend to do better than those raised in test tubes. Check out our advanced tutorial for more techniques on how to use test tubes with your ant colonies. Thank you for watching.